everyone, it's Paige. We are back for another YouTube video. I want to apologize for the two weeks that I missed. I was very busy traveling. I did some pretty cool stuff. I was in Las Vegas for the Derek Jeter uh, charity tournament, which was awesome. Then flew straight over to Missouri for the Bass Pro Legends. I was lucky enough to play with uh, Mr. Gary Player, Justin Timberlake, Tyler Tony and Mark Wahlberg over the two days. Uh, we had a blast and uh, it was it was a really special tournament. People there were awesome and it was it was really really cool. And then after that I flew straight to Dubai for the LET event there. They made history by having the first day to night tournament which was so cool. They are awesome and it was really fun to be there. And then after that I flew to Dallas uh, for the Byron Nelson. I played in the Tuesday uh, Celeb Am and then after that I did some work with Mizzen and Maine. But some meet and greets and then some other fun stuff. So all in all it was a really great trip but didn't have much time to film so I'm back at it right now and uh, today we're going to do a little instruction and talk about wedges. I feel like most people struggle with their wedge game and that's where you really score and that's how you improve and if you want to really low your scores I always say that it's 100 yards and in. Okay so all you need is a bucket of balls, range balls, whatever you have or a shag bag, um, whatever you want to use. You can do this on the range, you can do this on the golf course or you can do this on extended practice. Short game area if they have it some courses do some courses don't. I'm at True North and they don't have a very long practice area for short game. So I'm out here on the range. And I think this is what most people will choose as an option. So there we go, works for everyone. So you need a bucket of balls. You can use an alignment stick or not. I'll go through that later. And then you have all of your wedges. So I have my pitching wedge, my gap wedge, my 54, and my 58. And I'm gonna show you how I work through my entire bag or work through my wedges by um, trying to get better. And then last, you need a range finder or anything that can get yardages for you. This is vital to improvement and knowing what you're doing. So uh, you can't do this without having a range finder anything like this. Most of the tour players have TrackMan and so that's how they really get into their wedges. Most people can't afford a TrackMan or they really don't need it. So this is a great way to kind of save the cost of using a TrackMan but also getting uh, really dialed in on your wedges. So I'll show you what I do. There are two ways you can go about this. I have my 58. You can either have stock shots that you feel comfortable with. So either that's your half swing. You hit as many as possible and then you shoot off what that yardage is. So say my half swing with a 58. Looks like that. So I'll hit as many shots as I need to get a really decent pile of what it looks like and then I'll shoot it. And then I'll write down on a piece of paper or in my phone or on a notebook what that yardage is. And so let's say that's 45 yards. So I know that my half swing 58 in calm conditions on a flat surface with nothing else, no variables, flies 45 yards. That's really going to help you when you're out on the golf course. So you have 45 yards, you know exactly what you need to do. Say that it's 50 yards, then you know that you need to take a little bit bigger than your half swing. Or you can do this with full swing too. That's one way you can do it and you would work through your entire bag doing it that way. Um, most people know it as kind of like the Dave Pell's technique or philosophy where you have your like, you do it by like a clock and that's how it works. That has never worked for me. I can't seem to stop my arms at like a certain amount and consistently do that over time. I personally do not like that. I am a field player, so for me, I have my stock yardages with all of my clubs from a half swing and a full swing. And I work through my entire bag that way. And I know that if I have my 54 degree and I'm doing a half swing, I know how far it can go. So depending on my lie, depending on the wind, depending on if the green is um, elevated, downhill, um, 
very, like literally anything you can think of. Um, if it's maybe a little bit five yards farther, five yards less, I know exactly how I can adjust my swing because I know how far a half swing goes and know how far my full swing goes and I can kind of just figure it out in between there. Sometimes you can put an alignment stick down if you are just working on distances. So I will put this down and I'll hit as many balls as possible as I need for my half swing yardage. I try to see which one feels the best and sometimes it takes me a while to find my rhythm. So all I'm focusing on is trying to um, just do an exact half swing to what feels good to me. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit a couple more. This is also great too for your ball striking to finding the center of the club face because if you're hitting your wedges solid and you move into a bigger swing, it usually translates over into solid contact. So you're not wasting your time hitting these shots. It's gonna take some time and a lot of practice, but it's totally worth it and it's gonna save you so many strokes. And I mark kind of in my head on which balls are the outliers. So I don't count those. So that one I hit a little high on the club face and it went a little bit shorter. So I know that was my error and um, that was my fault. And so I try not to count that one when I'm looking at my base full of uh, what my yardage is. If that made no sense at all. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit a couple more just so you can see what my pile looks like and how I end up shooting it. And I know it's really hard when you see the pile of balls out there. Don't try to make it go to that distance just so it looks good. Really try to feel exactly what you're doing and making sure that it's still that half swing that feels good to you. Okay, so I have a decent little pile out there. So now I'm gonna take my rangefinder and I'm gonna shoot with some of the golf balls or that area. Okay, so it says 23 yards. So that's a half for my 58. And I'm going to then walk it off and just show you the pile that I have. Um, for shorter distances like this, you can walk it off and I recommend walking it off. Uh, but for longer distances, obviously it's harder to, can't walk it off in the middle of the range. So that's where the range finder comes in. I got 24, but I have little legs, so that makes sense. Um, so as you can see that this is my little pile that I have. Most of the ones are kind of in this circle right here. So that is the circle that I'm looking at. That ball, that ball, and then this one right here. That I didn't hit that one, don't look at that one. <laughs> those are both the outliers. So those are either mishits by myself, that was user error and not the swing. So now I know that if I hit a half swing, um, with my 54, 58, with nothing else, no variation, flat day, flat lie, uh, no wind, warm, it's gonna go 23.5 yards. Very helpful. Okay, and then after I feel comfortable with my half swing, then I'm gonna go to my full swing and do the exact same thing. It gets a little difficult when there are a lot of golf balls on the range and you're doing this. So try to go at an off hour where the golf balls are very visible or on a range where it's flat and you can see everything. After I do all of this, I go through every single club. Then I take the stick away and I pick different targets on the range and I try to emulate shots that I have on the golf course. So then if it's, I shoot a target and it's 84 yards, I know that, okay, I'm gonna grab my, 
I'm gonna grab my gap wedge, 84. Okay, now there's a little bit of wind. So I'm going to hit this a little bit less than my full swing, but have full power. like that was a good swing good shot and then you go through that after you do this entire process and you really try to see am I hitting it the yardage I need to be hitting it is the system working for me and am I just hitting it solid and good wedge shots as well so I'll go through a little bit of technique too just so you guys know like what you actually should be doing doing this drill like again is great for anyone at any skill level um, but it's important to know actually how to hit a wedge shot and there's different ways to also do it and you need to find what feels comfortable to you. So you have just kind of your basics. So you can go kind of middle of the stance, normal setup as if you're hitting a sh like a, a normal shot, maybe a little bit more narrow. And all you do is just take it half back, half through. So that's the half shot that I'm talking about. So it's really simple. You can do it at any speed that feels comfortable to you. I do it at around 80 because I don't like to hit my wedges at full speed. There's no excess movement when it comes to wedge shots. My instructor, he always tells me to have, like you feel like your arms are connected to your body and there's no excess moving parts. And so one drill, I like to do is a straight arm drill and all you do is just turn basically turn your body and nothing else is moving or working so you can do that drill to get the feeling of what you need to be doing in your wet shots you want the least amount of movement as possible so this is the drill again so as you can see my arms are basically glued to my body and all I'm doing is turning so when you do it bigger, you want to kind of have that feeling. That was very exaggerated, obviously. But then when you move into a bigger swing, it's the same kind of thing. And it's really easy to do. If you have a lot of moving parts, that's when you start to hit it thin or fat or inconsistent. If you want to work on the trajectory of your shots, then when, that's when your, uh, your setup starts to change. And so that's when you can start to put it a little bit farther back, set up a little bit farther forward, but it, then it's still the same technique. That is more of a flighted shot or lower. So you probably hear pros say they, they're hitting flighted wedges, and flighted just means that it's it's the, um, the flight or the trajectory that you want to see, and usually a lower trajectory or flight um, is better, just because it's easier to control especially if there's wind or anything else. You can just get it to go exactly the distance you need. I like to hit them a little bit lower. Sometimes when you hit them high, um, there's things that can go wrong with it. But if you need to, you just put it a little farther up in your stance and open your club. But higher doesn't necessarily mean more spin. So don't get those confused. If you need to carry um, a bunker or maybe something in front of you, then a higher wedge shot could be the play. But for majority of the time, a normal or a lower flighted wedge shot is going to be better. It's actually gonna have more spin as well because you're, act you're really nipping the ball. And when I say when you're nipping it, you are just, you're just catching the ball and that's how you get all of the spin. They say nip because you're kind of like, almost like a picking it off the ground in a way. So you're not, you know, digging into the ground. It's just a really clean, kind of crisp hit. So you don't, you don't have to take a really big divot. I think people get confused when it comes to the wedges because they feel like they have to dig into the ground and that's actually not what you want. You almost want a shot like that where you're nipping it or picking it or, I don't want to say pick it because I don't want you to flip your hands, but it's just kind of a crisp, uh, solid shot and when you hit it once you know exactly what you need to do and that's the shot that gets that spin but it's a little bit lower so that is how you hit the shots and the technique that goes around it when it comes to a full wedge swing um, I set my weight just slightly forward but that's it nothing else really changes for me if I'm hitting a full swing
when you do a full swing, you will not get that kind of nip that you have with more of like a half or a controlled shot. Um, with a fuller swing, you will tend to take a, a bigger divot and that's totally fine because since you have the speed, you're going to get that spin so you don't have to worry about it as much. Again, I like to hit them a little bit lower, but that's a personal preference. So I told you how to hit your wedge shots. If you're more of a beginner or inconsistent with your wedges, just do a kind of straight on, maybe center or a little forward of center, basic golf stance, but just narrow your stance slightly and have it be a real body turn. If you are a little bit more advanced and you want to start to work on flighting the golf ball, you can put the ball center or a little back, depending on personal preference, weight forward, and you still turn, make it a body turn. You can work on different flights, so this is more for an advanced player so that you'll work on hitting it high, low, um, doing whatever you need to do with it. And I think you obviously know what you need to do. It's just changes in your ball position, um, your weight transfer, and how your hands work through the golf ball, which I've explained in a lot of my short game videos. So you can look back on that if you need a refresher. So after you know how to hit it, how do you practice? So that's when I put the stick down. I grab a huge bucket of golf balls and all of my wedges. I hit half swings and full swings with all of my wedges and I hit as many as possible to get a good pile that I can shoot with my rangefinder. After I do that, I write all of my yardages in a notebook or my phone and I can refer back to that whenever I need to when I'm on the golf course and if a, if a number comes up, I know exactly where to look and what to do. If you do that with all of them, then you take the alignment stick away and you have your range finder and you go on the range with a ton of targets like this one and you shoot individual random targets and you go one by one. 52.5 yards is that little round white circle target out there. So I would now open up my phone or my notebook. This is my pretend notebook. I open my notebook and I look and I see what is closest to a 50 yard shot. And that we'll say is my 54 half swing. So I grab that, but it's 52. Then I look around and I go, okay, there's a little bit of wind, but not that much that affects it. And it's also flat. So it's just gonna be a little bit bigger than say my half swing. So that was pretty good on um, how far I hit it. And then you move on to the next target and you go do the same process all over again. So you're working on your technique. It, this will help you out on the golf course. Um, you're gonna hit better wedge shots. You're gonna lower your scores and it's really gonna save a lot of your rounds. I know when I'm not hitting my driver well, I really rely on my wedges and I, no one really knows how to practice them. So this, hopefully this helps you uh, with your technique and also how to practice it. And I hope you enjoyed the, this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below on what you wanna see on the next couple YouTube videos. I have a lot of ideas, but I really wanna do what you guys wanna see. So you let me know, I am here for you. So <laughs> I'm at your service. You let me know what you need and you know where to find me. Leave a comment down below and I will see you next Thursday.